What's up, everybody? Thrills Miller here once again. I'm the Croc Neck. I'm Jamin John. And we have an album review for you. So another one that came out that I honestly didn't know I had on my radar, but I definitely do now, yep. was the newest offering from Demiricus, Chaotic Lethal. This comes out again on Friday the 13th on Post Recordings. This band formed in 2001 in Indianapolis, Indiana. This is their third full length and first in 12 years. 12 long years. Now this band put out two albums on Metal Blade Records, one Hellbound and two Poverty, and then broke up in 2011, and then reformed as recently as 2016 and decided to come back with their brand of vicious death thrash. And I'm talking fucking vicious. Vicious, absolutely vicious. Not that their other two albums weren't also vicious, but this record has a special brand of just ball-punching, pummeling, fucking furious... Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. I mean, honestly, I didn't know what to expect because both their first two albums are very different from one another. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they almost sound as though that they're two different bands. Well, now this third band is coming because this album is vastly different than the other two, mm -hmm. and this new... Uh, band that's also called Demericus is possibly even more heavy, visceral. Mm -hmm. This is just a nasty sounding album. Like right away, you can tell the production is just kind of almost grating, but in a good way. Mm -hmm. Like the mm -hmm. guitars sound dirty, the drums are really up front in the mix and very punchy. Fuck. But, but man, it all sounds so raw and and real. The the drums, while they are punchy and in your face. It just sounds like an actual real drum kit. There's no bells and whistles on it. Fuck bells, fuck whistles. Mm -hmm. Unconditioned Hate, the opening track, starts off with, well, like the sample slash ambiance that kicks it off <laughs> instantly reminded me of like old Fear Factory. Like, there's a lot of interesting atmosphere in here. And mm -hmm. honestly, atmosphere really didn't seem like a big part of their sound before. Like, they were very riff centric just kind of go for the throat and you still get that energy in here but there's like these pockets of atmosphere and it has like sort of a industrial sort of vibe to it kind like, of like machinery sounds and metal scraping and like they're playing in a fucking haunted factory or some shit but the vibe of it the atmosphere that carries with it plus the vocals having this sort of static filter over them like sounds like he's screaming through a broken walkie-talkie sometimes, it really makes it even sound more twisted and dark. And the vocals aren't as raspy as they were on the two previous offerings. It's more like he's yelling this time instead of screaming or growling it out. Vocally, I think it's similar to Two. Like, Two, he yeah. kind of, like, had this very Tom Araya-ish mm -hmm. delivery, and you get a ton of Tom Araya when it comes down to the fast, thrashy sections, because, man, these guys love them some fucking Slayer. And, hey, I get it. Fucking Slayer rules. Keeping in, in tune with the first song, I would state, like, the first three songs on this album are just balls out, nonstop, in your face, thrashy death goodness. Smoke Chaser, again, dives right into it. Big old thrashy riffs. But something they incorporate early on, they get into these big nasty breakdowns, too. Dude. Ugh. Very heavy, very, like suffocation, like palm muted chugs, yep. some cool yep. like syncopated drums, and they're just brutal as hell. One of the biggest breakdowns on here that stood out was the one on the follow. The follow, again, thrashier in hell, like big slayer, like possessed, mm -hmm. early creator vibe, except like, I don't know, recorded in the same horrible pit of despair that Nails records all their albums. Sure. <laughs> but. Like, it just has this massive breakdown that just screams all things like 90s death metal. Oh, yeah. Big, nasty, sour lemon face, just bleh, of a breakdown. Probably, I think, one of the heavier moments in the album. I mean, this album is packed full of heavy, but it, it's kind of in, like, different styles, too. I yes. like that this, you can call it a death thrash album on its surface, but there's a lot more going on. The title track and the last track, Faith Crime, really kind of take atmosphere and dynamics to kind of like different levels, at least in my opinion for this band. They mm -hmm. just really branch out. Chaotic Lethal has this really creepy fade in. It's like drum and bass and you hear like squawking guitars start to build up in the mix. Feedback and such. And it turns into this sort of dissonant atmospheric track with these big hardcore breakdowns. Mm -hmm. And I mean like just 
vicious sounding like drum pummeling shouting at the top of your lungs fucking hardcore and this one employs a lot of those cool industrial samples like behind all the screams you hear like you know like weird samples of stuff like there's like little bits of spoken yep. word there's yep. again machinery sounds and honestly it might be the first time i think i've ever brought up this band in terms of a reference it reminded me of the band screw which was a 90s industrial metal band and they were kind of just like a heavier ministry this kind of has that vibe except darker like there's like almost a blackened or kind mm -hmm. of like blackened mm -hmm. doomy tinge to the song but not as doomy as faith crime and again it leads in with like an ambient dissonant dark melody behind uh, almost like a static grinding when it kicks in it has this Again, sour lemon, super dark, doomy, almost like a really dark Sabbath. Honestly, it reminded me a lot of like the band Trouble, except without Eric Wagner singing because it shifts into like D beat fucking thrash after that. But this mm -hmm. doomy section, like it just sets the whole vibe of the album. And the vibe of this album is angry. I mean, fuck, this is pissed. Like, honestly, I'm pretty sure the working title for this album was Demericus 3, Get the Fuck Off My Lawn, Punk. <laughs> but I ain't having it. Fuck you. Pretty sure it was. I... <laughs> that's that's the feel. Like, that's, that's what, the, like, dude, hellbound poverty, like, this is just like, no, fuck you. I'm gonna hit you with a baseball bat. Or a skateboard. Something like that, right across the fucking face. Get the fuck off my lawn. Get off. Fuck. And in 12 years, you know, I mean, you get older, you get more bitter, and that's the whole thing. Like, to our younger viewers, yeah, you're young and pissed off now, but don't worry, you'll transition to old and bitter, just like us. <laughs> so, yeah, you'll get that whole get the fuck off my lawn thing, you know, when you get along. And for as, like, dark and serious and hateful this fucking album is, it, it hates, it, I think, everything. There's some really fun song titles. I have to bring up uh, Merciless Slut Cult. I mean, I I feel like I might have joined that at one point. I mean, I, was I all think the, I might have too. Yeah, it's I, all the HM2 stuff. I keep saying I'm a slut for HM2. Uh, you know what? Why not? Let's let's join a cult. It'll be fun. And the song "Fuck the Fire," which sounds dangerous unless it's like you know, a Tinder hookup with a redhead, which I don't think that's what the song's about. But I'll ask. Yeah, I'll you know ask. what? We'll ask. We'll ask. We're gonna have to ask. Yep. Uh, but yeah, the title itself. Kind of goofy, but it's just kind of like that aggro goofy, and I yep. I like it because that song kind of broke it up a little bit too. Because before that, everything was just getting fast and thrashy, and you know, not uniform, but you were kind of like at this peak level of rage the entire time. This one slows it down to like a bolt thrower, double time groove. Yeah, and it's just like you know, just shifting down a gear and still mowing people over. A lot of this really reminds me of like an even grittier version and it's kind of hard to imagine of like bands like Solstice or uh, Demolition Hammer. It's just vicious sounding but thrashy at its core but there's so many death metal moments like you get Morbid Angel tremolos that kind of pop up here and there. Yep. The breakdowns seem way more you know attuned to death metal except for the song Choke. The breakdown on that one just kind of screams like 80s thrash but most of the breakdowns in here very centered on death metal mm -hmm, and just mm -hmm. flat out brutality. I would say out of all their albums, you know, this only being the third one, I would state that this is probably their most cohesive album. The songwriting has definitely improved fourfold, I would say. It's good to see they haven't forgotten how to play guitar. Scott and Ben are just tearing shit up. But they really explore a lot more dynamic in here yeah. than what they have in the past. Bringing elements of not only thrash, but doom and death doom and death metal. It's good to see all that come together. And yeah. it really forms nicely. All these songs transition well. And things. atmosphere. Like, yep. again, like atmosphere is kind of an interesting thing. There's like a little bit of like black metal or, yep. I wouldn't call it like noise, but like there's a lot of like distance and it, it just creates this whole vibe of this album. Like not only is it pissed off, but it's a little bit creepy too. Now I do have like, a couple of issues with it. Early on in the album, you get a sense of this bullet train pace, and the way it's tracked is it's immediate. Like, as soon as Terminal Future ends, boom, you're in a smoke chaser, like, right away. Like, before yep. you even have a chance to really, like, oh, this, oh shit, this is a different song. And that's kind of difficult for note-taking. But, you know, <laughs> we can still back it up. But, right. in, like, in terms of, like, how quickly they transition into each other, like, there's not really a break at all. It can be kind of confusing just in terms of like if you're listening to the same song still because 
those like first four tracks are so fucking thrashy and yes. they're kind of like laying on that same vibe but you know again with different riffs and the only issue I had with the vocals was when they were trying to do something a little bit more tuneful that static filter kind of stays on there and it just sounds a little odd to me like it's not bad no but I just think maybe like a different filter on there would have been good because when he's shouting it sounds awesome like it's just kind of like creepy like again like a broken walkie talkie at the bottom of a well it's just kind of a creepy sound and I dig that but with the tuneful vocals uh, it's it's kind of okay. So overall, I'm gonna give this four stars. I think this is a killer, killer album. Much like Nick said, you know, minor gripes and has nothing to do with production or songwriting. They were firing on all cylinders. Way to return after 12 long years, gentlemen. Welcome home. First time they've showed more dynamic. Um, it's great to see the focus not only again on thrash but on things more like death metal because th these breakdowns, th these are probably some of the heaviest breakdowns I think this band has ever written. But again, it's all balls out. It sounds like they were having a great time. Definitely something you should go pick up 100%. I am also going to give it four stars. Uh, holy shit. 12 years of bottled and fucking condensed rage and distaste for everything has made, I think, their best album. I like their first two. I think their first two I are good. This is better by, like, I think a substantial margin. Like, this is refined contempt and, of course, music, too. But I, I, the whole vibe of it, I, I think, just makes it such a hostile listen, you know, compounded with the pummeling drums, the great fucking riffs, the added atmosphere in here just makes it sort of like a, just a creepy listen as well as just hyper aggressive mm -hmm. like I mean I think even like fans of grindcore would appreciate how hostile this sounds there is just this nasty murky feel to it and you still get all of their token like slayer worship and yeah. all the fast thrashy sections this is just a beast of an album if you love death thrash I fucking strongly recommend this one and if you like your production nice and kind of gritty, this right here. Yes. Check it out. Yes. I say check out the other two as well. Those are also good. This, honestly, is where I would start. And I think this is the best thing they've done. And holy shit, welcome back, guys. Yes. Fuck, yes. dude. I didn't know I was anticipating this one. And then I heard it. And was like, yeah, no, I, <laughs> I might have I been anticipating. I just didn't know it. I was unconscious that I knew... I wanted to listen to this yep. a lot. And even when I talked to them, they didn't really make they, they didn't really like hype this, I think, in, in in this sort of way. They were just like, Yeah, you're you're gonna see some things that uh, you haven't seen before. Uh, you know, I've known these guys for a long time. Welcome back, gentlemen. Yeah. Welcome back. Jesus Christ, man. This is uh, an unexpected fucking surprise. Welcome back once again. I already want to hear more. And yes. I'm also going to order this album because it's awesome. And I recommend yes. you guys do yeah. too. And we're also going to come see it live eventually. We'll eventually. get there. I promise. So if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below. We're actually going to work on some content there. But we're going to wait till we get back from MDF. So we're nice and broke and sore and possibly sunburned because the Edison lot's open now. And we're going to be sunburned. We're going to be sunburned. I'm, I know. I know. Out of all the things I'm going to pack, I'm going to forget fucking sunscreen. And we're going to get there. And I'm just going to. I'm going to be the color. Be fine. Of, I'm going to be that. That color. <laughs> that one. And, and that one. Hopefully not right there. That would suck. Anyway. No. Grill marks, bud. Yep. Also, if you would like to get one of our shirts, hit us up at thrallsmetal.com. There'll be a link down there below. And there's also another link down there. What's it to, John? <laughs> it is to the Denver Death Fest. Uh, Thralls of Metal had the opportunity to partner up with Swinging Noose Productions to bring about the first annual ever Denver Death Fest in Denver, Colorado. September 30th through October 2nd, 2022. If you're in a band and you would like to play, you can submit your info to www.denverdeathfest.com. We're also allowing sponsorship opportunities, so please come be on the ground floor operation of something brand new that we hope is going to be really kick-ass. And that is Denver, Colorado, not Denver, Nebraska, which I'm not sure exists, but it's not that one. As always, thank you all for watching, subscribing, commenting, all that stuff. We love you guys. It has been an awesome journey, and yep. it continues to be an awesome journey. It's just getting uh, more awesome, more awesome, which is bigger, stranger, weirder, which is weirder, veinier. Yep. Wait, no. veinier? No, no, it's not. It's not. It better not be getting veinier. Please don't. 
do that. <laughs> but with that, we thank you all for watching once again, and we will catch you later.